The majority of people that talk about fitness trackers online, they're getting paid to talk about fitness trackers, or they're getting paid through an affiliate link. I've heard from sources inside the industry that they are getting up to $50 for each person they recruit. That's not a very nice review, is it? This is an honest review. Completely unbiased, no affiliate link, nothing. I've been using the brand new Aura Ring 4, the Whoop 4.0, and my old Garmin Phoenix 6 simultaneously. If you're from Harrison, that means at the same time, for the last 30 days. I bought them with my own money, and I'm planning to return one of these and keep one of these. In this video, I want to tell you how to use these fitness trackers to lose weight and get healthier, and how accurate the data is for sleep, fitness tracking, and also recovery for each single one of these trackers. Which of these are best and do you need to upgrade to one of these if you have an older device like my five-year-old Garmin Phoenix 6? Cause new is always better, right? I'm gonna give you four words to live by. New is always better. So which is better, the Aura Ring 4 or the Whoop 4.0? Both. The Aura Ring and the Whoop are variable health trackers without screens, focusing on recovery scores like sleep and HRV, health metrics like resting heart rate and blood oxygen, and also data on exercises. One thing about the Aura Ring is that it also measures your body temperature, which can tip you off if you are catching a cold. That can be pretty useful. A feature I really like about the Whoop though is that it can wake you up just like an alarm but without the sound, which I appreciate. By gently vibrating your wrist, it can wake you up when you have hit your targeted sleep time, instead of waking up on a set time, just like a normal alarm would. Neither the Aura nor the Whoop has a full smart interface like my smartwatch. The Aura is a sleek ring, the Whoop is a wristband. Both offer 24-7 heart tracking though, which is something Apple Watches and my older Garmin don't do. The heart tracking on these devices only turn on during certain intervals throughout the day. So, does that mean the Aura and the Whoop data is more accurate because the heart tracking tracking is always on? I'm going to tell you which one is more accurate. But, as a YouTuber, I'll put that later in the video. I don't make the rules, I just follow them. But the device that is best for you is the one you can wear the most. That's why I can't use an Apple Watch, even though I'm really an Apple fanboy, because the battery in Apple Watch sucks, and I'm not about to schedule my life around charging a smartwatch, but fortunately for you, both the Aura and the Whoop are convenient. Whoop battery lasts for four to five days. You can charge it without taking it off. The Aura Ring battery lasts about seven to eight days, and my Aura Ring is always full with battery because I put it on charging during each workout. I'll go into detail later on why I don't use this during workouts. For sleep, I think the Aura Ring wins. I shower before bed because I usually work out late. Cause is it just me or does Showering before bed also helps you fall asleep faster. Let me know. The thing with the Whoop is going to sleep with a wet wrist strap can feel annoying. But the Whoop is better for workout though, because for exception of maybe running, you can't really wear the Aura Ring to any workout. So if you're a training guy or gal, the Aura Ring has to be teamed up with a smartwatch if you want to track your training, which is not ideal considering how much the Aura Ring cost by itself. Meanwhile, the Whoop, it can be worn on the bicep and also be integrated into other clothing. You need to buy accessories to that, of course, but nothing is free in life. But my point is that Whoop can easily be used on all type of training. And I'm not talking about weightlifting and normal sports, but also in Jiu Jitsu, boxing, type of training that you couldn't even use a smartwatch on. The Aura Ring stands out a little bit more discreet and fashionable, ideal if you want something subtle that fits into social settings. While the Whoop, on the other hand, sort of screams fitness tracker, training person. I'm too good to drink water from a plastic bottle. 
you get the gist. In all serious notes though, there was a study a while back showing that some women find wearing fitness trackers less attractive though. Who knew? But the ordering isn't perfect either, especially if your finger sits between two sizes like mine. This is a size 10, but it's kind of loose. Now, this have never happened to me because I never wear a ring, but it have happened surprisingly to many I know. They have lost a ring because it was a little bit loose while fingering a bird. But to be fair to them, majority of the stories that have happened happen in a dark room with loud music, and there's usually alcohol involved. It's a lot harder to notice that you have lost a ring in those circumstances. But for me, fortunately or unfortunately, depends how you see it. I don't have to worry about that because I'm not doing a lot of fingering anyways. I'm not too sure what I'm doing with my finger here. Is this how fingering works? <laughs> but I just want to let you know that it's a lot easier to lose a ring than a wristband. And you'd be surprised of how you could lose a ring. Okay, so how can these devices help you lose weight and get in shape? Even though sleep tracking isn't perfect, I think it's the most optimal tool that these devices offer. Improving your sleep enhances everything, body composition, cognition, recovery, and energy. I genuinely believe that lack of sleep is a huge problem in our society right now. The search term, why am I so tired, has steadily grown for 20 years. I believe Lack of sleep is a big factor to why we're overweight. Check out this study from Wisconsin Sleep Cohort. They tracked 1,024 volunteers to see how sleeping less than 6 hours per night affected their hunger hormones, leptin and ghrelin. Leptin is the hormones that tells your brain that you're full, a good hormone when it comes to fat loss. Ghrelin, on the other hand, signals hunger, a bad hormone when you're trying to lose weight. And the result, the people who slept less than six hours had lower levels of leptin, the good hormones, and higher levels of ghrelin, the bad hormones. They had also increased BMI and higher risk of obesity. And I believe that everything that gets measured can be improved. That's why people who weigh themselves regularly tend to lose more weight when dieting. And if you want more nuggets about how to lose weight or build muscle or get healthier based on research and science, you should check out the link in the description because for 30 days I'm giving you nuggets that will revolutionize your fat loss, health and fitness. And if you don't find the information I give you is useful, you can at any time bail. It's free. Link in the description. These devices give you data-driven feedback that can encourage healthy behaviors like drinking less, not eating late, and prioritizing recovery. They all have some kind of recovery scores. Aura call it readiness, Whoop call it recovery, and Garmin call it body battery. But it's essentially the same thing. When you see how unhealthy habits messes with your health scores, your brain starts associating bad sleep with, for example, that extra beer or that shitty meal that you ate. Over time, you might unconsciously make better decisions just to avoid seeing bad recovery or sleep scores. But here's the thing. You can become too obsessed with data also, and relying too heavily on data can influence your mood and perception of your readiness. Just because a device tells you that you have a bad recovery doesn't mean that you can't have a productive day or crush your workout. Humans actually preach this on podcasts, and that's why he didn't use fitness tracker because of that reason. This is why I don't wear a sleep tracker. If you tell people they slept poorly, your recovery score sucks, they naturally perform less well the next day than if you tell them your rec recovery score is high. Today, he's super bullish on Whoop. So yeah, everyone has a price. At the end of the day, these fitness trackers can nudge you to better habits, but don't let them dictate your life because they're only tools. They're not your masters. So which one of these provided the more accurate data? Here's the thing. The data you get from sleep and calories you burn from all these devices isn't accurate at all, according to current research. If you want to test if a new device is more accurate, you need a private lab professional equipment to confirm that. And Sherwin Shears, I'll leave a link to his channel, 
has a video testing how accurate these newer devices are for burning calories and sleep, and the result, they were all over the place, impossible to tell which one is more accurate. But one thing these trackers are really good at though is measuring your heart health. Resting heart rate and HRV, heart rate variability, are two very important metrics for cardiovascular health and recovery. So even though these trackers doesn't measure perfectly how many calories you burn, you can still use the heart rate data to see how effective a workout might be for fat loss compared to another by simply comparing how hard your heart is working throughout the workout. And here's what's really interesting for me. The data I got from my five-year-old Garmin is almost the exact same data that I got from the Aura Ring 4 and the Whoop 4.0. The sleep and calories weren't exactly the same. Again, you can't truly trust those measurements though, but the heart rate and the HRV were nearly identical with all these three devices for 30 days. So that really begs the question, what is better about these newer devices? And is it really worth upgrading? Both the Aura and the Whoop offers advanced analytic, but more data doesn't mean better results. The most important data is already in those older devices. Plus, data can guide you on your journey, but the real progress will come from you, from your consistent effort, not a device you have on your finger or wrist. And like I mentioned, more advanced data can lead you to be more paralyzed, especially if you get too obsessed with data. So the Aura Ring starts at $349 and it costs $6 a month for a subscription after that. The Whoop costs $30 each month, but you can get it cheaper if you buy a 12 or 24 months membership. I'll put on the screen right now what the total cost would be for intervals of one to five years. Do I think it's worth it? Personally, I could never replace one of these with my smartwatch because I like checking the time on my watch. I also need the countdown function. I use that surprisingly a lot. Also, I listen to music with it so I don't have to carry my phone when I'm working out. I sometimes rely on the GPS here and also I use it to pay for stuff because seriously, who pays with regular cards anymore? If you have to dig into your savings account to afford one of these, and you already have a smartwatch with many of the key features, then I don't think it's worth it to upgrade. If you have a smartwatch and never really looked at the data from it, be honest with yourself. Are you really gonna use the extra data you get from these newer devices? If not, it's probably not worth it either. But if that money would otherwise be spent on drinks, excessive takeouts, or supplements, that won't do a thing for you. Why not spend it on something that could actually make you a little bit healthier? And if you're highly competitive, driven by data nudge, Whoop might give you that extra push. That is why I am actually keeping this female sex organ extinguisher. Don't worry, it won't make my life any worse. And I'll be returning the ordering for. But this is just me. Now you know the benefits of these devices. It's all about how you use the data to improve habits and workouts. So instead of spending more time trying to figure out which devices has better HRV and sleep tracking, potentially paralyzing yourself even more, you should just take action and spend that time rather in the gym because that will give you a better ROI. I promise you that. But did you know that only 18% of all gym members work out regularly? Why is that? If you haven't seen much progress in the gym and want to see faster results, I recommend you to check out this video because it will help you speed up the progress. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Stay healthy, keep thriving, and maybe I'll see you over there.